But tonight, federal agents taking a closer look at emergency vehicles. A driver was caught using a fake EMS unit to smuggle people who were in the country illegally. Valley emergency responders say cases like this is giving them a bad rep. Channel 5's Angelo Vargas investigated what real emergency workers do before entering a checkpoint. This is the unit United States citizen was driving when he was caught posing as a first responder. Rule of first responders tell us this illegal activity can put lives at risk. I guess it's not going to make noise. I don't think they had hooked up the siren to this one yet. It's brand new. Medicare EMS Director of Operations Mac Gilbert is looking forward to getting this new ambulance on the street. He's worked in this field for 30 years. When he saw these pictures of a fake supervisor first responder unit, I think it's a shame. Gilbert explains this illegal activity put his job in a negative light. It casts a shadow over honest providers. Border Patrol says the suspected driver of the ambulance sped off after being asked for a secondary inspection at the Falfurias checkpoint. A chase pursued and agents caught the driver and three Brazilian nationals in the country illegally. The vehicle did not look like any first responder vehicle that I've, that I've seen in the area, but it did look like a first responder vehicle. Gilbert points out a crime like this puts lives at risk. And could actually cause a delay in transport of a patient if, if, uh, if the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol has to stop and, and look through every ambulance because fake ambulances and first response vehicles are being used to move aliens or illegal drugs. Um, that could cause a problem. We wanted to know what a real supervisor first response unit has inside. So they might carry, uh, they might carry additional equipment in the back, including a stretcher, oxygen tanks. Then if you look in the, uh, if we can look in the front over here, so you can see they have additional medical equipment in here that the first responder might use. Gilbert explains Border Patrol agents know when they are coming. If we're moving a patient to San Antonio, yeah. Our, com our communication center is going to go ahead and notify whatever sector is closest to, the, to, to where we're transporting that patient from. We're going to notify them who we are, where we're picking up, approximately, you know, the unit number, the names of the guys, and, and approximately what time the vehicle is going to go through the checkpoint. Gilbert says all emergency service vehicles are identified by a Department of State Health Services number and the name of the company on the unit. We asked Gilbert about the emblems on this first responder in posture unit. It says Texas Volunteers Rescue. He explains the unit will usually have the name of the county or state. Well, Channel 5 Cecilia Gutierrez took a closer look into the companies who make the signs for units like this. She joins us live here, Cecilia. Yeah, several sign companies we spoke to today say there are several red flags they look out for when they're having an order for an emergency response vehicle decal. That's a definite big bear price. Owner of Sal's Vinyl Graphics, Sal Saliva, says he's seen something like this happen before. It has nothing, any kind of identifications of where it's from. Someone trying to pull off a phony emergency response vehicle with phony decals. There's been a lot of things that happened in throughout the years and uh, a lot of them has been in cloning, especially with Border Patrol and other things that are happening like that. He says there aren't any laws or regulations that stop him from selling emergency response vehicle decals to someone. We looked it up. In the state of Texas, there are not any laws that stop someone from selling an emergency response vehicle decal. There are copyright laws, meaning you cannot use the name of a city county or state in a design. Because of course ambulances are privately owned. So yeah, I, I mean someone could come off the street and say yeah I want this done. But that doesn't stop him from looking out for red flags. He says usually an ambulance company will come in wanting work done on several vehicles. Now, I've never had one just do a ambulance. Usually there are companies that uh, we know and they'll come to us and we'll, we know of course we they're repeated business. They'll also send him an invoice. But we still, I, the only way I will do it is if I get information from when they come in, or they'll call me or email me uh, from the city, state, county, is the way we'll do it. We just don't get it off someone just walking in and doing it. Saldiva says because of past events, he tries to stay away from people who seem suspicious when they're wanting to buy a decal that can be used incorrectly. And Saldiva says because there's no law that asks for an ID when someone's ordering one of these decals, he's always aware of who he's selling to.
Live in Paris, Cecilia Guedes, Channel 5 News at 6.